brought to you by New Jersey Resources. Welcome, I'm Steve Adubato. We're talking about preschool education and our children growing up great, if you will. And we are pleased to be joined by Amanda Potter, curator of education and interpretation for the Zimmerly Art Museum at Rutgers University. Good to see you, Amanda. Thanks for having me. Describe this wonderful museum. Uh, the Zimmerly uh, is part of Rutgers. We just celebrated our 50th anniversary. Uh, we house one of the largest uh, university art collections in the country. Uh, everything from American and European art, um, but what we're really well known for is our collection of Soviet nonconformist art, which is... I'm sorry, what is again? <laughs> Soviet nonconformist art. Art, basically, that was not officially approved of by the communist government during the Soviet Union. Uh, very interesting stuff. Art that was either, you know, politically uh, critical of the government or just in a style that wasn't uh, acceptable to to Stalin and, the, and his uh, successors. Um, very, very interesting work, and we're... It were it's a wonderful teaching resource as Joseph well. Joseph Stalin did not love art, did he? Oh, he loved art that was... The art that he controlled. Yes, yes, and that was very positive <laughs> right. um, and spoke highly of the Soviet Union and was very clear. It had, he, had a, he favored a style called socialist realism, so it had to be no, no uncertainty, mm. no ambiguity. That goes against the concept of artistic expression. It certainly does. So let me ask you this. The audience for the work there at the museum is? It's, so obviously a, a big part of our uh, audience is the university, both faculty, students, and staff. Um, so we do see a lot of uh, classes. We, t we tailor to them. We have an academic programming curator that works specifically to find those deep connections. So we have, of course, art and art history, um, but also classes on media, history, environmental sciences. We even work with the uh, medical colleges. How do you connect this to children so young? So it's, it's, it's about growing up great. Yes. So I'm here to speak about one of our one of our longest running programs, which is our preschool storytelling um, adventures in art. Um, sorry, preschool adventures in art and storytelling. Uh, it is a program that we really uh, enjoy doing because we reaching children at that young age is one of the earliest, you know, it's one of the best indicators of, of them feeling comfortable in the museum mm. later in their life. They feel that they um, have, it, there's, a, there's an exposure, sim simply walking in the doors of a place that is so different from their, from their school environment, from their home environment. Um, they learn to look at art, um, to identify different types of art, have some of the vocabulary mm. that they can use. And, and that vocabulary, one of the um, reasons this is a program that um, we run out of the education department, that uh, vocabulary has been shown to be important for pre-literacy skills. So these are, these are. Does it help them grow the vocabulary skills? Yes, so we're introducing words like portrait, landscape, abstract, um, also just getting them to speak about what they see. It's, it's different than reading stories, uh, reading comprehension. They are, um, when, they work, so th when they come for our programs, um, they first work with a storyteller. We have a resident uh, storyteller at the museum. He is, uh, his name's Gerald Fierst. He's a wonderful um, and very expressive storyteller. And so he works- Ex Explain that, sorry for interrupting. Yeah, Express yeah. that for a second. Uh, explain that for a second, Amanda. Storytellers, people think, oh, so kids get told stories. It's not that. No. From what I've seen, it's much more engaging, interactive, challenging, open-ended questions are asked. Exactly. They're pulled in. Talk exactly. about that. Exactly. So yes, they, that is it. It is very engaging, very um, you know interactive. So telling stories um, that it's different than having a, being being read to as a child. There's nothing that That's they can kind of. That's a one-way communication exactly. experience. Very passive. Exactly. Um, so this is something that they are doing um, actions or they're following instructions. They're predicting. They're responding like theater almost in a in a way, um, and so it's really focusing on um, on their listening skills, their ability to predict what's going to happen next, to follow and remember patterns that go through this. Because it's many, critical thinking as well. Exactly, and many great stories they rely on repetition. You know, something happens, uh, there's a maybe a, a hiccup, something happens again, and eventually there's there's success. So right. those great stories, you know. Things like Goldilocks, for example, you know, that's a story where there's that, that pattern of something's not quite right, again, she tries again, it's not quite right, and finally the third one is, you know, the one that she's looking for. What do you see in these children, or many of them, when they experience a program like this? What kind of changes do you see that in them? Um, you know, I've, I've had teachers tell me really wonderful things. So this story, the visit begins with storytelling, then we go into the galleries. Artists and storytellers are both 
um, communicators. And so, and, and then we ask the children at the end of their visit to come down and draw with us. Um, I've had teachers tell me that they have seen their children draw in a way that they've never drawn before. They, there's more sophistication, there's more detail in their, in their drawing. So there, something has been stimulated, something has been activated in them that they that wasn't being Is that the so. interpretation part of all this? So the inter interpretation part of my job is kind of a, um, reference is more actually the pa passive learning that, that um, so labels, um, other texts and things that are in the galleries for our, our regular visits. So I think of the education part as, as programs, really places where we are working um, you know, face to face with visitors. The interpretation part is something that maybe is just there for the visitors that are coming in without necessarily interacting with a person at the let's out here, what's a heat tube? <laughs> so the heat, uh, so heat tubs. Heat um, tubs? Heat tubs. Not even tubes, no, they're tubs. Yeah, they, well, they're, they are so, so, uh, metal cylinders. There's three aluminum cylinders. Um, so they, they certainly could be described of as tubes, but the artist John Goodyear called them heat tubs. Um, it's one of the highlights of our American collection. These were, were made um, in... We're looking at them as you're yes, speaking. Go ahead. So the, they're made in the 1960s. Um, they're one of the works we love to use in the storytelling program, one of the most popular for sure, because it's a work that the children can actually touch. That's when, you know, one of the biggest things and, and difficult for both children and adults is that can't touch in the museum, even though there's some very inviting things. The heat tubs, John Goodyear was interested in art that w did engage both your sense of touch as well as your sight. Um, so the, each tub is uh, set to a different temperature. There's one that's kind of cold. There's one that you know you touch and it's you, you think, well, you're not actually going to get burned, but you're like, oh, that's that's quite hot. And then there's one that's really just warm. And so I, I have the children experience that. I don't tell them a lot about it first, but then we do go back and ask them, um, you know, can you think of a story? where something is too cold, something is too hot, and then the third is just right. So we're making a connection to the Goldilocks story. How much do you story. love what you do? I, I really, I love what I do. Because? Um, because I get to work with kids every day. I get to work in a beautiful environment at a great university. Uh, and there's no two days that are the same. I'm working right now with our summer art camp. Uh, we're out at the Rutgers Gardens working on art and nature programs. So every, it's a, it's a wonderful job that really is always full of new challenges. Amanda Potter. I want to thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very Helping much. Helping our kids grow up great. My pleasure. Stay right there. We'll be right back right after this. Brought to you by New Jersey Resources, the North Ward Center, and by Berkeley College.